So I am a, I am, first of all, I am married to my high school sweetheart. We have two children, a 17 year old senior and a 13 year old eighth grader. Um, we did not plan that out very well. So we'll have two graduation parties at the same time. <laughs> um, and what I will say that I did not realize is that senior year is pretty freaking expensive. Um, but it's okay. Cause you know, we have the, the income. I just did not know. <laughs> um, and also very time consuming. So he's also a football player. Um, and with that being said, I feel like I'm grateful to be where I am right now in business because I'm able to give the time that both of my children require right now at the ages that they're in um, and the grades they're in and all the activities they're in. So I'm the mom that in the beginning did this because I was at home with them all day long. Um, I have 11 years in, so they were small when I started and I needed more um, interaction with um, adults. So that was my original reason. Um, there was a little bit of postpartum depression mixed up in there that I couldn't get myself out of. And my husband thought this was a great way to get out of it. He actually thought I should have a party and that would be the way. And then at the party, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna sign up. Oh, I curse, I'm sorry. <laughs> you find so I signed up at my party 11 years ago. Um, and my why has obviously changed numerous times, um, but it's still the, the, it, the core of my why is still myself. Um, so when I don't have something for me and I'm just everybody else's everything, I am no good to the world. Um, so <laughs> it's funny because when we transitioned over from passion parties to pure romance, I had said to my husband, you know, I think maybe this is my sign and I'm just supposed to give it up. And he was like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> so I stuck it out and abs it was like being called up from the minor leagues to the majors. We, I always say we got adopted by Daddy Warbucks. Like, <laughs> we were legit Orphan Annie and it was Holy like being shit. adopted by Daddy yes. Warbucks. But at the same time, thought that we had it good because everything we heard about pure romance, we heard from passion parties. So they didn't want you to know how yes. good it was on this side of the, of the fence. Um, but yeah, so I stuck it out and lost my entire team when we transitioned over. And that was what, four years ago? Is that 2016? Yeah. So lost my whole team when we came over and basically restarted um, and have built from then. Um, we currently have 200 girls on my team. Um, we are sitting at 850 retail, um, group retail right now. Last year we sold 500K for the entire year. This year we're at 850. Like the growth has been insane because of this whole pandemic. Um, but yeah, I would say that my why, well, you know, certain things have changed. The one main piece of it has always been me. So I've always done this for me. Um, and when I'm not doing it, I'm not happy. Money's good too, of course. <laughs> what do you feel like your superpower is in this business? Connections. Connections. I would 100% say my business is where it is right now because I take the time to have genuine connections with my team, with my clients, with with other consultants that I, you know, that I encounter. Um, because I'll just say that I've been at events where I've been like, oh my God, there's such and such. And then they just kind of like, oh, I don't have time. I, I will just never make anybody feel like they are not important. And that goes along too, like with the conversations you have with people. So I would say my superpower would be connections and making people, making women feel like they are so important to me. So my first question is going to be about your superpower. What are some ways or examples that you feel like in which you feel like you connect? So can you give us some examples of what like Andrea Burns connection with maybe your customers or a hostess looks like? So I have also one of the ways that I train my team is to, we add an extra 15 minutes to the power hour um, and we call it the Facebook flirt. So making it a, a point to scroll Facebook and comment on all of the pictures you possibly can, whether it's while you're sitting on the shitter 
or laying in bed, can't go to sleep. Take the time to comment on as many photos as you can. It does not matter what it's a photo of. However, if it's a selfie, you have got to go out of your way to make them feel beautiful, right? So I am a cheerleader up and down my Facebook page all day long, all day long. Um, and because I don't feel like women get enough encouragement, right? Um, but also, you have to pay attention to, right? You can't like message Patty and accidentally ask Patty about, you know, Jackie's dog that I saw was like, you have to pay attention. Um, but I think it also goes back to that whole opening conversation and asking more questions than doing all the talking. Um, and that, that involves my team too. I love that. I think that's awesome. So the Facebook um, word. Amanda dropped a, or sorry, Amber had a question in the chat. Have you ever had life knock you on your ass so hard you dipped out on your business for a minute? If so, how did you pull out of it and get back on track? I have recently had life knock me on my ass, but I do the opposite. Um, I gravitate to my business because this is what makes me feel good instead of pulling away from it. Um, just in the beginning of the month, I lost my cousin on a Monday and my grandfather on a Friday. And I took that week, you know, to do what I needed to do for family, but literally dove right in because this is where I get my, my feel goods. And, and I think that all goes back to my why, like my reason for doing this is because it makes me feel important. So I don't. I have not dipped and I hate that I can't relate to that question, but this is where I go when I don't feel good about life, if that makes sense. Well, I think it's, it's nice for people to feel like that's a possibility, like that you can manage your business while shit is going down and it can be a really great way to escape um, from everything that you don't necessarily want to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, who else has a question? Uh, Amber, I'm going to let you guys, so I'm going to dip for like two seconds. I really have to go pee. So Amber, go ahead and take the, take the field girl. And then Jackie, if I'm not back by the time she's done, if you just want to roll with it. So on that question, since you've never dipped out or had that problem, what would you say to one of your girls who did, if you had a leader on your team that dipped for a minute and was having oh, a hard time getting back? Mm -hmm. That's all I've had happen in COVID. So, so what do you tell them? <laughs> Bitch, get your shit together. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it turns into a, so number one, I don't want them to feel like I'm stepping on their toes. Number two, I don't want to feel them to feel like I'm being insensitive, right? Because I don't operate that way, right? But I do need to be sensitive to the fact that people do operate that way. Um, so I am a huge fan of an open conversation. And it normally starts something like, hey, girl, I noticed that you haven't been really engaged in the group um, or haven't really heard from you lately. Is everything okay? So I don't necessarily like the question, what's wrong? Because it automatically gives that negative connotation that whatever they're feeling is not right. Is that as simple as that sounds? But I use that when I talk to my kids. I use that when I talk to my husband. So it's an, an open conversation of, hey girl, I've noticed you know, that you haven't been really engaged in the group. What can I do for you? Or did something happen or whatever? And then the conversation will kind of take place, you know, organically, obviously. But somewhere in that conversation, I say something like, how can I support you during this? And what do you need me to do for your team while this is happening? It's all very... Um, but I'm also an empath too. So I'm so aware of how I make people feel and I hate to feel like I made someone feel bad. Um, so I'm very aware of, of what I say when I talk to people that I know are going through some shit, even though I'm putting on this show, like I'm a hard ass. I'm a very soft <laughs> individual, sensitive. Um, so I like open conversation, just flat out asking them what they need from me as their leader, as far as team is concerned, you know, how can I help you or how can I support you during this with your team? 
And I've had that conversation so many times <laughs> recently. <laughs> Does that help you? Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Um, Miss Joanna asked, what works best for you for sponsoring? So if you could drop a couple sponsoring bombs, that'd be awesome. Um, building those connections. Um, all right, here's my secret sauce to sponsoring. You are going to come across so many leaders that will tell you to work it on the 80-20 rule on social media. 80% personal, 20% business. I disagree. I feel like you can 100% business all the time. Um, but there's a way to do it so that you're not the annoying sales lady, right? Um, I like to drop, drop seeds. So I drop seeds every single day about my business or um, multiple times a day, right? So my seeds are really simple and I have to appeal to my all different audiences, right? So I bought my dream house, right? A year ago. Not everyone's gonna relate to a dream house because they can't think past the idea that they need to get groceries in their refrigerator ASAP, right? So I have to make sure that I'm reaching every audience um, on down the line, whether it be talking about purchasing a brand new home or how, you know, thank God I was able to treat my husband for his birthday or fill the house with groceries or whatever. Like I call them sponsoring seeds. So dropping seeds instead of begging for business. And what I call begging for business is book a party with me, join my team. I have free gifts for you. Like I rarely do those posts. It's so rare that I do those posts. Most of my posts are seeds about the business, about what the business has done for me or what the business has done for the people around me. So my, my, whether it's sister consultants or my team, like you just gotta be a ray of sunshine, but sprinkling pure romance every chance you get, but not being the annoying person that everybody wants to unfollow. And I also use my husband as clickbait. Yeah, you do. He's sexy though. <laughs> I've seen him in his swimmy trunks. Hi. <laughs> um, here's what I'm going to say, like about the 80, 20 rule, you guys, if you go and look at Andrea burn, if you go look at her Facebook reminder, please don't send her friend requests. You guys just hit follow. Um, it looks like she is following the 80, 20 rule. And it's really cool because her page is literally a giant commercial for what this business can do for you. And I think that that's huge. Um, I would love to know your top like booking tips. What are you doing right now to get parties on your calendar? Um, what did I just do recently? So I don't know if any of you saw the back to school post. I put it up in the social seller group. Yeah, that was what I used this last round. Um, and it was either, they, it was the end of last, what was it? Yeah, end of August. I needed to fill my dates in September. So I had put up a post about, show me your back to school kids, whatever, I have a prize for you. Messaged everybody and offered them. My, I'm super simple. I'm super simple, straight across the board. I either have a coupon code for you for 15% off or, you can have $50 in free product if you pick a night to party with me virtually in September. Okay. I like to keep it simple. So I'm currently working on a booking blitz um, post for my team. And we're gonna use the, you know how corporate has the super cute graphics? They have one that's pumpkins, it's 10 pumpkins. And I'm going to, it's gonna be the same gift for every person that uses the pumpkins. Um, but pick a pumpkin and get a prize type of thing. So. Super simple, right? Um, pumpkins can be chosen more than once, but the goal is to use those. To, you're either gonna sell product with it or book parties with it because the deal you're gonna give them for product is not gonna be as good as the deal that you're giving for them to book a party. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm talking in circles now. No, you're good. Um, but I like to keep it super simple. Um, I also feel like personal messages do much better than putting up a post and asking people to comment for new girls. Um, where I'll get a, a shit ton of comments. New girls are like, well, nobody comments on my stuff. 
I have built up this engagement, right? This is me constantly working my business nonstop that makes the comments blow up the way it does. So until you get to that point, you got to put in a little extra work. Um, one of my favorite pieces of advice is for um, social media. You have to Facebook flirt, right, to get some engagement, but it's really important to beat your algorithms that you use three comments or three words or more in a comment. And Facebook literally gives you like comments now. Like it's as simple as possible. Um, so here's a tip on birthdays, right? So if you post something on somebody's wall and say, happy birthday, Noel, right? Noel replies and says, thank you so much. Reply again and say, I hope you enjoyed the cake or something like that. So your second comment, your second reply puts you in their timeline. Then you'll get more action. But also messaging people and saying, hey, Noel, I just put up a, a pumpkin post. Go pick a number, girl, because I know you've been thinking about hosting a party. Go pick a number. I got some prizes in there. So ain't no shame in directly messaging them and telling them go claim something or tagging them on the post. Um, so I'm a huge fan of, I'm all about the connection. And when you build your connection, when you drop those comment here, it's just going to take off because you've built the connection is what I really need you to understand. So just putting up a post is not going to do the work. That's the passive way to do it. Make sense. I feel like once I start talking about social media, like I just can go on. And go for it. You are, please feel free to just keep talking. <laughs> you, we will take all of the social media tips. Um, super easy to beat the algorithms though now is by literally commenting on everybody's shit, like commenting and replying to everybody's shit. So when somebody comments on something, whether it's in your VIP or on your page, if they, so if somebody picks pumpkin number six, after I write down that Lucy picked number six, I'm going to come back to Lucy's comment and say, all right, Lucy, I sent you a message or all right, Lucy, got you down for number six. So now it bumps back into timeline because I dropped another comment. Same thing I do in my, I did it today. I put up a post that said, hey friends, in my VIP group, hey friends, I'm super close to a gigantic goal and I have a coupon that expires today. Who can help me out? Every time somebody commented, I replied to them with sent you a message. And then the next person replies, sent you a message. I know most people won't reply to those comments. They just send the message. Mm -hmm. But when you reply, it bumps it back up in the timeline. I sent you a message. No and then idea. when it started to die down, I would come back and say, you guys are great. We're X amount away from, from the big goal. I had no algorithms. Idea. It seems tricky, seems time consuming, but it's so worth it to figure it out, to work around it. Yeah, that's awesome. So Ashley Joe asked, um, how are you doing it with your VIP groups? Facebook's been a jerk lately with not showing people things from our groups. Um, is this due to the way, is this due to the way we do on our personal Facebook? Of what we do on our personal Or what Facebook. we do on our personal so are your Facebook, are your VIP group algorithms linked at all to your personal timeline? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think so, but I would say that I do enough on both my personal timeline and in my VIP group to keep them both jumping. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I'll post things in my VIP group that I won't post on my personal page. So I just, if I'm, you know, feeling like there's no type of conversation going on in my VIP, I drop something stupid and it's normally some, it's always, it's always something that's a call to action. So like today I did like a, would you rather Wednesday teas with ice or uh, candle wax, like just to get some conversation going. And I think dropping those type of posts that are a call to action are important in your VIP and on your personal page. Um, and I think I, you just have to keep the conversation going in both places. Well, it seems like I would say that the reason that I've exploded the way that I have during the pandemic is because I have worked to build the out to boost my algorithms. And it's insane yeah. how, how much they've blown up during. Yeah. I had no idea that it was that second reply that bumped them into your timelines, which makes a lot of sense because my, I noticed my VIP group has been like dying 
whereas my personal page seems to be fine, but I'm way more likely to respond to comments on my personal page, whereas my VIP group, I just kind of let them comment and do their thing and like let it yeah. do its own thing, um, not realizing that that was what promoted or promoted that. Um, I have got another question for you. If you guys have questions, don't forget, just drop them in the chat. Um, are you, what are you, are you doing virtual parties right now? What are you doing to book parties from your virtual parties? So I am doing the same thing that I was doing at in-home parties. And it's basically if three parties book from this party, your hostess gets an extra hundred dollars to shop with after the third party. Nice. Um, and it's a really corny, like cheesy nursery rhyme type sounding thing. Like <laughs> Ashley will get a hundred dollars free after party number three. Nice. And then every person that, so those three people will get automatically $50 to shop with. Yeah. So my hostess already got 50 for her party and she gets another hundred after the third party on top of whatever she got in credits. Right. And I also, so this last one that I did, my, my retail was 3000, I think, right. Sounds crazy, but it was a, it was a, a big group of people. And I think maybe 11 or 12, somewhere, somewhere between 11 and 13 shop. I couldn't get any of them to book a party until she went back in the group and said, holy shit, like I just saved $250 on my order. And then three of them booked. Nice. So she's going to strike it rich after the third party. Yeah. But three of them booked after her posting that. So did you say that every single one of your hostesses gets $50 to spend with you? Typically. Okay. If they get 50, I de it depends basically how the party goes, right? Um, if the party is not going very well retail wise, yeah. then 50 is my choice. Yeah. I'm just going to say I'm adding an extra $50 to your order. It's going to come with, right? However, if it's a good party like this last lady, I took $50 off her total. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I have a ton of shit that I got in six packs or retired flavors or things like that, that I count for the $50 free product. So it, it was minimal out of my pocket for those things. So can you pretend that we are like your virtual party and actually like say what you would say, like for your booking portion? So... I kind of, I do it like the whole time that I'm doing the demo, right? So of course, when you talk, especially when you talk about like the extensive items, um, like main attraction. So if, if, if main attraction is calling your name, don't forget, you can book a party and get main attraction at a discount. So I sprinkle things like that all throughout my demo, but then at the end, um, so what I would normally do at an in-home party is walk around with envelopes um, or scratch offs on the hostess reward brochure things walk around with those, get three people to pull, and then they scratch it off in the shopping room. That, people like that scratch off shit. Yeah. It's like the lottery ticket, but everybody wins. Um, and when I'm doing those in-home parties, it won't necessarily be $50. Some will say $50, some will be like, two body do. Got it. It's your choice, right? Um, but I think that does way better when it's in person because they're physically scratching off in the shopping room and it's that gratification type of deal, right? But when I'm doing it virtually and I'm, so I've done my virtual parties a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not a fan of Zoom virtual parties because I feel like it make, it takes longer um, because I can't get people to stop talking and I'm not the type of person to be like, okay, shut it down. Um, so the couple of Zooms that I've done, I feel like just took way too long and it, I, I don't want to be on a Zoom call for that long doing a party. I've done them also like pre-recorded video. So <laughs> I have a pre-recorded party demo that is 15 minutes long, 15 ish minutes long. Are you laughing at me? Yes. I can't even introduce myself in 15 minutes. I can't get my body line in 15 minutes. What's she talking about? <laughs> I literally think it takes me 15 minutes to say my name and the first product. All right. So here is why the 15 minute pre-recorded video it's so badass. Um, what I was finding was that with during pandemic, during COVID, people were easily distracted by everything around them for the virtual party, right? 
So I came up with this whole 15 minute party demo idea. And this is actually what my new girls use when they launch. So after I do that party for them, they use this. This is their party. Um, in the beginning of the video, I say who I am. I, I open it with, if you're watching this video, you are either one of my hostesses or clients or one of my babes invited you to a party. So I have it set up for me to be able to use it and any girl on my team to be able to use it, right? So that's my one option. I, I basically go between two and I base it on the engagement in the event. Follow me. I'm not a bougie consultant, but I don't like to waste my time. If the engagement is low, I use a pre-recorded video. If the engagement is great, I go live in the event. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like that's fair. Do you tell them, do you tell them that? Like, hey guys, if I love it. I tell my hostess. So they don't typically know how the party's gonna go. Um, my hostess coaching is the same for everyone. There are just some parties where people just don't engage and that's fine. Um, so I still do my, drop my 15 minute video in there. And then afterwards I drop a, like a promo type deal that's only good for 24 hours. So when I use the pre-recorded video, if you spend $99 or more retail tonight, you get a free full size product from me in the mail. They have no idea what that product is, but people hear free and they're like, done. I added extra shit just so that I could get that free. That probably cost you $10. <laughs> okay. So that's one way to get your retail up when I do my pre-recorded. Um, I would not say that my retail is down when I use the pre-recorded video because it's based on low engagement anyways. Right. Right. So low, low engagement, low attendance anyways. I had one last night where I freaking forgot that it was the presidential debate and I felt like it would have been a waste of my time for me to go live while everybody was watching that shit. Mm -hmm. So I did the pre-recorded and the party sales were still $500, but I didn't do anything but drop a video and then reached out to my hostess this morning and her order was 250. So I'm good with that. Yeah. So when my engagement is really good, right? And all right, I see, I, this is what happens when I get excited. No, go girl, go. I'm like all over. Go. go. Let me finish how the pre-recorded party goes. In the pre-recorded party, I do drop a seed that book a party with me, you're gonna get the hookup as a hostess type of thing, right? But I have a post that goes up that explains the promo, basically the special, that is only good for that evening. So I tell them it ends by 11 p.m. that night. However, the next morning I'm like, you know what, forget it, it's still available. No big deal. Yeah. But in that post, I still put in there an automatic $50 if you book your party with me. And this, so this hostess for my ones that have the low engagement. So this is kind of going back to what I was saying before about the $50 in free product, because it may seem like it's a lot of money, right? If my engagement is low, it's $50 of product of my choice that I'm just giving them. So it's not me taking $50 off their total. Yeah. It's me like making a, a goodie bag and giving them an extra $50 of product in their, in their order. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause everybody went to the website to order, but she shops with me. Okay. When it's a good party. So when they're super engaged, when I go live and do the demo, my VIP prizes or, or deals are different. And then for the good hostess, I'm taking 50 off her total. Plus her hostess credit. Okay. Follow me? Yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Then, of course, when I'm doing the live, I can drop more seeds about booking parties. Um, but also, I don't know if any of you do surveys for your virtual parties, mm -mm. but that's one way to find out right up front who wants to host a party and who's not interested at all. Oh, like a Google form. Got it. Yeah, like a Google form. Um, yeah. I use those two. So I ask them that question, fill this out. And then follow up personally after the pre-recorded video is up about, hey, I saw you marked that you'd be interested in a party. Yeah. You want to get some free stuff? You know, so, um, but when I'm live, I'm able to book more parties kind of on the spot. And it's kind of like, you know, oh, I see Cheryl. Cheryl, I see you dropping all those comments. I know you want a party with me, don't you, girl? Like doing all of that during the live 
right? And then Cheryl's like, oh my God, yes, I do. So it's real organic. I love that. But I feel like that's the easiest way to do business. Like I, you know, I really, I really do is it's gotta be, it's gotta be real. Um, will you share your 15 minute video with me? Cause I'm fucking mind blown. Yep. <laughs> like, is it shareable? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like legitimately I'm over here. Like I'm st I still don't understand. And it's like, okay. So it seems crazy, but the video, the demo, the party itself is 15 minutes long. However, leading up to the party night, I've dropped commercials Okay. in the event where I'm covering the products that I'm not covering in the demo video, right? Mm -hmm. But in the demo, I'm still, I still cover 15 products in 15 minutes. I just talk like this. <laughs> mind blown. Yeah. yeah, mind blown. Okay, um, awesome. All right, you guys, does anybody else have any questions for Mrs. Andrea before we let her run away for the night? Because I'm sure it's late there. It's, you're a what, babe, central? Yeah. Yeah, it's late. Who else has got a question for her? Are your heads exploding right now? Yeah, it's good. I have one. Oh, uh, yes. is. So if you're going live, are you still doing the 15 minute video? No. Like the 15 minute no. party? Yeah. When I'm live, it typically, it typically takes around 45 minutes when I do it live. Um, and this is why I like to do it live because they can't interrupt me. They can engage with me. They can chat with me, but they can't interrupt me. Like I can keep talking where I'm on zoom. They would interrupt and that's what would make it take longer. And I like to be done and done. Well, and I, I like that then there's a difference, right? Like between, um, cause like for me, I always thought, okay, I could do, I mean, I do zoom or a Facebook live or drop a full party video. Well then what's the incentive for the hostess for having people there? Whereas if she knew that they were going to get a 15 minute video or a full party experience for engagement, you know, I, that's cool. But they don't, so they don't really question it. Right. Yeah. Most of the time, they don't know until the day of when I'm like, hey, so this is how it's going to go. Yeah. And I just make it seem like this is just how I do it. Yeah. Um, even if they've already been to a live one, right? So if they were alive at a live party, I just explain to them, hey, so based on your engagement, it would be really awkward if the only ones that showed up for the live was me and you, because that's basically how the comments are. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I get it. And then I just sell the whole idea of you'll be able to tag them and get them to watch this 15 minute video where you probably won't get them to watch my hour long demo th that they weren't on when I was live. Yeah. So that's the selling point. Yeah. Cause if you can't get them to engage in the group for the party, then how the hell afterwards are you going to get them to go back and watch an hour? You know, no it. way. That's in no way. All right. Love it. That's so the 15 minute works. That's happening. Yep. That's, that's happening. I'm like, I see Jackie's yes. I see all my trainers are like, yes, <laughs> it will go into the grail. Andrea Burns is making it into the grail. <laughs> like so good. You should have seen Cheryl's face when I told her that part. She was like, wait a minute. What did you just say? Like, yeah. maybe we should have talked about this before you went live. <laughs> No, it's so good. It's well, because too, I, like, like I said, I think it makes sense because at the end of the day, women either shop, they want to shop with you or they don't period. Like it just is what it is, which is why if you have the right group of women, you can throw a catalog at them and have a thousand dollar party. If they want to shop, they will. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Why, why give them an hour? Like for me, I love my one to two hour parties because they're engaging but if you're mm -hmm. not engaging in it why would you want it to be any longer than that that's fucking awesome stoked about that um anybody else have any other questions real quick yes i'm gonna ask amber's question <laughs> what was your aha moment oh uh, my aha moment was when i came over so i've always had a business brain always I've always, even though I laid it, I, I feel like I laid it low at passion parties. I've always had a business brain, um, never really had the interest of growing a team over there, but my aha moment when I came over here was Chris Chiganelli, literally, I feel, and I don't want to sound like, like my nose is not up his butt, right? Okay. 
you right. Minus. You're right. <laughs> okay. When we had our town hall meetings, right, and Chris came to every city and did like his, you know, met with like the people or whatever, um, my conversation with Chris was a little bit different than everybody else. I feel like a lot of the other women were like real like fangirly or whatever, where my questions were like business. And I appreciated that he was straight to the point, no bullshit type of person. Um, so that first conversation, I could tell he had the same moment I had where it was kind of like, I like you. Um, and from there, I would absolutely say that Chris telling me that he believed that I could be amazing at this was like, what the fuck am I waiting for? When the CEO took the time and then he picked me to be in future leaders. So if you're in future leaders, raise your hands. Don't take that shit lightly. Like go all in, all in. I was all the way in at that point. And when I was in it, it was when you could not miss a class. If you did, you were dropped. I had a trip already freaking planned. And then the damn class list dropped. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Caught a flight to Cincinnati for the class. So that I would not miss, I mean, go all in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. I saw she jumped off. So my aha moment was somebody at the top um, telling me what they saw in me before I saw it in myself. And that somebody just happened to be the fucking CEO. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And it's funny because <laughs> B used to be like, I'm really tired of hearing about Chris. Chris, 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 Chris. And the first time he met him, our walk back from the pool, I think it was Cabo, was like, okay, I get it. Get it. Total man crush. Yep. Right. Yep. I love it. Okay. I'm going to ask you our last question. If you could give a consultant, like, your number one piece of advice, like, the number one thing that you wish that you had done, like, from day one, um, the most life-changing thing you've learned in your business, oh my God. what would it be? I know. Damn, this is deep. <laughs> um, but realistically, touch your business every day, even, it's some, even if it's something small. You have got to touch it every day. Because what happens when you don't, like I even touch mine when I'm on vacation. You can ask my husband. Um, it, it probably drives him nuts, but he respects my hustle. So touch your business every single day. It, whatever it is, You've got to touch it every day because that will keep you involved. Yeah. And you don't want to get comfortable not touching it. As stupid as that sounds. No, it's, it's true though, because all of a sudden you realize it's been two or three days and then all of a sudden it turns into a week and you're like, wait, how did that just happen? Right. And then how do, how, how do I just get back into it? Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, I'm assuming it doesn't have to be something hardcore. No, God, no. Something small. Um, like I was e-learning, so a, a peek into my schedule right now, right? My son is a senior, and there's a lot of shit that comes along with having a senior. If you've never been there, I will pray for you when you get there. Um, a senior football player at that, um, but also my eighth grader is e-learning. I'm also, I'm the work from home sister, so I have my two nieces here that are e-learning with me as well. One of them is fourth, fifth grade. One of them is kindergarten. So I'm, I don't have the time that I used to have, but I'm sitting next to her while she's doing her kindergarten shit and I'm working my stuff on Facebook. And then when she's ready for me, you know, I got to change something out for her, whatever it is that she needs me to do. I quickly set my phone down and I had a moment today where I was like, okay, now she's done with school and I literally laid her down to take a nap and I was like, I should go downstairs and do something feeling bad. But I had already put up that post in my VIP group and was building those comments and sold $750 just from a post. So it was kind of like, okay. So when I say touch, you don't have to like, it doesn't have to be sit down, turn on the computer, pull out your files, like do something, whether it's a post or reaching out via messenger or commenting on, you know, your posts in your events or posting in your events, whatever it is. But you have to do something every single day. And I wouldn't even say it has to be a money producing activity, income producing or whatever the verbiage is. Um, I, I don't even think it has to be that. I think it just has to be just staying involved because especially in this type of work, 
it's so easy to just not do anything. So condition yourself to do something every day would be my piece of advice. I love it. I love it. Well, then we are going to let you go. Thank you so much for being here. We super duper duper appreciate having you. I am going to hit you up for something like a live or something in our group on yeah. like scheduling. Let me know if there's anything that you need babes for, from me, for your team. Happy to return the favor. Um, just a reminder, you guys, if you have a question for Andrea, if you can do me a favor and ask it on the ringleaders group, that way we can get everybody the answer rather than blowing her up. I know mm -hmm. that it is super appreciated. Uh, Amber, let me come back, please, thank you. <laughs> So um, awesome, you guys, well, it was super good seeing all of your faces tonight. I hope you all have a badass hump day. Andrea, thank you again, Ms. Burns Boss, for being here. We appreciate you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah. Bye, friends. Bye, guys.